Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James D. Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the guns coming up for sale in their upcoming auction. One that I noticed on the catalog is this particularly gorgeous cased Colt revolver. What jumped out at me is in fact the model of Colt that it is. It's an 1862 Police, which is just about, well it is in fact the last of the percussion revolvers developed by Colt. It's one of the more interesting and frankly I think one of the best looking models. The idea here was they took the, the 1849 frame, which was a 31 caliber revolver, and they kind of scaled it up to a 36 caliber cylinder. Now they did this by actually putting a little step in the frame that we'll take a look at a little closer in a moment. And this was in fact marketed as a police handgun and saw reasonably widespread use as such. Um, you might, you know, thinking about it today, we kind of picture the police wanting a, a pretty hefty proven stopper of a cartridge. Uh, so one might expect that at this period they would be using the 44 caliber Colt revolvers, which is actually not the case. Um, prior to using this, the most common police Colt was actually a 31 caliber. So this was a bit of a step up. Now it's a five shot revolver where the, uh, the Colt 36 caliber Navy guns, which were made on slightly larger frames, were six shot. You'll also notice, of course, this has a fluted cylinder that's done to reduce weight, as was um, the use of the small caliber frame. These are actually pretty petite little handguns and not wouldn't be all that bad to carry. Now, there are about 28,000 of these made. They did share their serial number range with um, a similar model, uh, the 1862 Pocket Navy. As was typical with a lot of firearms manufacturers of the time, you could order them in pretty much any custom configuration you wanted although the standard configurations were obviously it was limited to five shot because of the the physics and the mechanics of the gun but then you could get it in a three and a half, four and a half, five and a half or six and a half inch barrel. Uh, there were a, a number of custom guns provided by Colt with little short two and a half inch barrels which would be that'd be kind of neat to take a look at as well uh, but those are extremely rare very few of those were made. Uh, this one is serial number 20 20,000 and a half, give or take, um, which would put it somewhere right about in the middle of production, given that these shared their serial number range with the other models. Let's go ahead and bring the camera back in a little closer and take a look at some of the details here. All right, so before we look at the mechanical details, we should check out this cool case, because these really are pretty neat. Comes with a powder flask. Um, this would have your caps. This is, of course, your screwdriver for disassembling and maintaining the gun. It comes with a, a bullet casting mold with compartments for both a round ball and a pointed bullet, whichever you happen to prefer. That fits in there. And of course, the firearm itself. And it does have all of the instructions for use, how to load it, how to maintain it, how to clean it, everything like that, nicely tacked up on the top there. Uh, Today they pretty much try and inscribe all that onto the side of the slide of an automatic pistol. All right, so looking a little more closely at the gun itself, we can see a number of interesting features about it. I mentioned there's a step in the frame, that's right here, and you can see that the cylinder itself is very slightly rebated. They're able to make it a little bit larger in front, which accommodates the five chambers of 36 caliber, and then in the back it's small enough that they didn't have to change the lock work inside this uh, 1849 pattern frame. You can see the fluted cylinder here in between each of the chambers that I think that makes it look really neat. So one of the cool details about this particular gun, as you can see here, there's a little crown proof mark in between each of the cylinders and down here on the barrel. The reason for that is that this pistol was actually exported to England at some point and English proof law required that imported guns be reproofed. So. This one traveled overseas before it came back to the US at some point. So one of the potential hazards of carrying a percussion pistol like this is that you either have to leave a chamber empty and leave the hammer down on that empty chamber, or if you leave the hammer down on a live cap, you run the risk of, say, should you drop the gun or slip and fall, a blow to the hammer could set off the cap that it's resting against. Colt had a solution for this. It was this little slot cut in the the face of the hammer, that slot interfaces with a pin right here in between two of the chambers, 
there is a pin like that on each one of the five spaces between chambers. And what you could do is actually bring the hammer, I can do this right, and a little bit of fancy work with the cylinder, and you can bring the hammer down to rest on one of those safety pins, and now that pin prevents the cylinder from rotating, so it is in a totally safe condition here. When you go to cock it, it indexes right up to the next chamber ready to fire. So that was the official method of safe carry that did allow you to actually keep all five cylinders loaded, all five chambers loaded. There are not a whole lot of these 1862 police revolvers still floating around. Um, they were not one of Colt's higher production uh, level guns. And frankly, a fair number of them were converted to use uh, metallic cartridges when that technology became available. Um, this was the last of the percussion guns that Colt developed. Um, it would sell these until 1873 when they, uh, obviously the single action army, was launched in 1873 and, and it really took off. But this particular one is, I think, gorgeous. It's got just enough wear on it to really look genuine and authentically used. Uh, but it does lock up very nicely and has a very nice strong hammer spring. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a very cool to get to see a, a somewhat unusual and very svelte little Colt revolver like this with its original case and all of its accessories. If you'd like to make this one yours, you can certainly do so. It's coming up for sale at the Julia Auction House. If you go ahead and take a look in the link below, you can drop right over to their catalog, check out their description, their high-res pictures, everything like that. Set yourself up with an account and place a bid if you're interested. This one is lot number 1349. So, thanks for watching.